let's talk about the differentials that come in the Losi LMT. The Losi LMT is equipped with three differentials, one on the front axle, one on the transmission, and one on the rear axle. A triple differential setup is something commonly used in A-scale off-road buggies and truggies, and as a matter of fact, the differentials used in the Losi LMT are based on the same differentials that are used in those vehicles. All three are sealed diffs, which means that you can tune how they operate by changing the thickness of the fluid inside. The differentials in the LMT can be altered to change how the truck steers and accelerates. Out of the box, the truck comes filled with 500,000 weight fluid in the center and 100,000 in the front and rear diffs, and that's a good setup for general use. Silicone oil is the fluid used in the differentials, and you can get it in a wide variety of thicknesses. Using thinner fluid in the front diff can increase steering into corners, while thicker fluid can add stability when braking and increase on-power steering when exiting the corner. Thinner fluid in the center diff can decrease acceleration and on-power steering, provide more off-power steering, and is better on bumpy surfaces. Thicker fluid can increase acceleration and on-power steering, and it's better for high bite surfaces. A rear differential will increase cornering traction and steering into a corner when using a lighter fluid, and a thicker fluid will cause it to decrease rear traction in the corners and reduce wheel spin. The only thing you really need to watch out for when going thinner on the diff fluid is going too thin and allowing the diffs to diff out. That's like when you go into a turn and you see the inside tire spin a little bit faster, sometimes grow more than the outside tire, or you know, torque twist under acceleration, it'll, it'll want to twist the axle, the lighter tire will start spinning faster and that'll cause the truck to pull from one side to the other. And then also too, when you're accelerating and you punch it and you have the diff a little bit too late in the center, it'll cause the front tires to spin, the rear tires maybe not even at all. You don't want that to happen because you can heat up the differential and ruin the gears and it also hurts performance greatly. When changing the fluid in my diffs, I pull the assembly apart and let the parts sit on a paper towel for an hour or so so it can drain. Then I install the bevel gears back into the housing and set it on a shock stand or a vise that's been opened just enough to accept the output shaft of the differential. When filling the housing, I pour fluid in and stop when it almost reaches the top of the bevel gears. Thicker fluids that don't flow as well get poured in a little at a time, then I let it settle for a while before adding a little more until the diff is finally full. To close up the diff, I align the holes in the ring gear with the holes in the diff housing as good as I can to avoid any unnecessary movement once the two are together to avoid messing up the gasket. And then when I'm tightening the screws, I snug them all up and then I tighten them in a crisscross pattern. When you open a diff, you'll find a gasket between the ring gear and the housing, some bevel gears, and O-rings around the output shafts. The gasket and the O-rings are what keep the silicone fluid in place. The front rear differentials have some shims on the gear side of the assembly, and they can be found between the gear and the bearing. These shims are used to set the gear mesh of the bevel gears. From the factory, they're pushing the ring gear as much as it can be up against the pinion gear for a strong gear mesh. But if you're racing and maybe not applying as much power, you can move a shim to the housing side to loosen up the gear mesh a bit and allow the gears to rotate a little more freely. The only way to get to the shims is to completely disassemble the diffs so when you adjust the gear mesh, don't install the internal gears or diff fluid until you have a chance to partially assemble the differential by installing the bearings and the ring gear and trying it in the housing to check the gear mesh first. 